Welcome back to Software Engineering 2FA3, Discrete Mathematics with Applications 2. I am Bill Farmer, and we're going to talk about today a new topic, Deterministic Finite Automata. Now, a finite state transition system is a very useful idea. It's a system in which there are only finite many states that the system can be in, and there's only finite many ways that the system can transition from one state to another. So if we look at a picture of a finite state transition system, there will be some, some states, I'll, but there will be just a finite number, and there will be only a finite number of ways of transitioning from one state to another. There might be multiple ways of going from one state to another, but, but there's only a finite number. So a, a very simple example of this is if I have an intersection where I have two streets coming together, we might have a, a traffic light in the middle. That traffic light could start off where it's green for cars going left to right, and it's red for cars going up and down. And then this could tra naturally transition to uh, yellow going left to right. And that would transition to red all the way around. And then that would transition to uh, green going up and down, red otherwise, and yellow going up and down. red otherwise. And finally, it would go to red all the way around. And so we have six states, and we transition like this. This is how the typical traffic light works. And we get here, we go back to here. And notice that it looks like this state and this state are the same, but they're not really. When you're in this state, you transition to green up and down. When you are in this state, you transition to green left and right. So this is an example of a finite state transition system. Now, one thing that's important is that physical systems are often engineered to behave like finite state transition systems. So they're, they're designed and implemented so they are always in one of a finite number of states. And perfect example of this is a modern computer. Now, finite state transition systems uh, can be modeled by finite automata. Finite automata is a very simple model for capturing the essence of a finite, trans finite state transition system. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So there's different kinds of finite automata. The two kinds we're going to be looking at mostly are deterministic finite automata and non-deterministic finite automata. So deterministic finite automata are abbreviated DFA. That's what we're going to look at. And they're defined as a tuple uh, that has five components, a, a finite set of elements called states. This is finite because this is going to be modeling a finite state transition system. And the transition from one state to another are triggered by members, symbols, and an input alphabet, which is also going to be finite. And then we have a transition function that takes us from a state and a symbol to a new state. That's how transitions are done. And then there will be a start state and a set of final states. And this set of final states is any possible, could be any possible subset of these states. So the transition function takes us from a state and a symbol to a state, but we can extend that to a state and a string of symbols to a state. And this is defined recursively using pattern matching as follows. If we're in state Q and we are reading or looking at the empty string, we stay in state Q. If we're in state Q and we're looking at a non-empty string, so it's a string that ends with the letter A, then 
we basically process um, the stream X with Q and we'll end up in a state and then we use our transition function and we apply that to that state in A to get to the final state. Uh, so you can see that uh, delta hat here is defined using delta. Um, now, one of these DFAs can be described using either a transition table or a transition diagram. And these are both equivalent ways of, of describing this, the DFA, but transition diagrams you see are usually easier to, to understand than transition tables. But we're going to start nevertheless with an example with the transition table. Here's the transition table. Um, everything we need to know about this DFA is here. These are the four possible states. These are the two possible input symbols. Uh, start here says Q1 is the start state and final here says Q3 is a final state where you can see there's only one final state. And the table here gives us a transition function. Basically, if we're in state Q1 and we're reading symbol B, then we're going to end up in state Q0. Um, so that's the transition table. Here's a transition diagram. This is all the same information. We have the four states, Q0, Q1, Q0, Q2, Q3. We have a start state. And the final state has two circles, concentric circles. So we start here, we have a final state. And every um, state has two transitions, an A transition and a B transition. So we can see from Q0, if we're reading an A, we go to Q1. If we're reading a B, we stay in Q0, and so forth. So we can use this to read or process or compute, however you want to think about it, a string. And so my input alphabet is A and B, so I have a string of A's and B's. So let's say we have A, A, B, A, A, A. And so I start on the left, and we start in, let's say, Q0. Uh, maybe, maybe it's better to write like this. I'm in Q0, I'm reading an A, and if I'm reading an A, I go to Q1. And if I'm in uh, Q1 and I'm reading A, I go to Q2. If I'm in Q2 and I'm reading a B, I go back to Q0. And if I'm in Q0, I'm reading an A, I go to Q1. And if I'm in Q1, I'm reading an A, I go to Q2. Um, Q2. And if I'm in Q2 and I'm reading an A, I go in Q3. And, and I've read the whole string, we end up here, and we're in the final state. So that's basically how, how this works. We just read one symbol at a time in the string, and for each symbol, we're going to transition to a new state. And we start with the start state. We may or may not end up with the final state. So uh, we say that a string is accepted if when we process that string, starting at the start state, we end up in a final state. Otherwise, we say it's rejected. And we say the set or language accepted by our machine, by our DFA, our deterministic finite automata, is a set of all strings accepted by M. So it's, it's all strings over our alphabet that when we process that string starting with the start state, we end up in a final state. So that's called the language. And we say a language is regular, it's a regular set or a regular language, if there is some DFA that, whose language is that language. So a regular language is a language of strings that is accepted by some DFA. And this notion of regular language is very important. We're going to be coming back to it over and over again. And so we have two examples of, of DFAs. The first one you've already seen. 
and the first one, its language is a set of all strings that contain three a's consecutively as a substring of x. So it might be a, b, a, b, and then something like this. So it will contain three strings. So this would be a member of the language of this first example we saw. And if we go back here, this is, this is pretty obvious the way if you, if you try to understand what's going on here, we start in the start state. If we see a B, well, we just keep reading Bs. We're, we're interested in As. If we see an A, we go to this state, and this state tells us we've seen one A. If we see another A, we go to this state. This state says we've seen two As. If we go to another state, this state says we've gone to three As. And if we're done, we accept. If we're not done, then we keep going because it doesn't matter. We've already found three in a row and we will accept. Now, if we get to the state where we've seen one A and then we see a B, we go back here and start over. Same way here. If we, if we go from um, Q1 to Q2, so we've seen two A's and now we see a B, we go back and start over. Okay, so we're going to look at one more example. Uh, this example, I'm only going to give the transition diagram. Um, maybe I'll tell you what the, let's go back and say what the language is. So we have an alphabet of 0 and 1, and if the number of, so basically we're going to accept strings that have the number of zeros equals the number of 1s equals 0 mod 2. In other words, it's going to be, uh, have an even number of zeros and even number of 1s. So it, it's going to be something like this. but not this, not this, because this has an odd number of zeros and an odd number of ones. Now, the important thing to think about with these DFAs is that we, if you're going to design a DFA to accept that language, you, you need to think about what the states are. And so this state, the starting state, is going to be the number of zeros equals zero mod 2, and it's going to be the number of 1s equals 0 mod 2. And that's why it's a final state. The start state and the final state are the same state. Now this state here, notice if we read a 1, we're going to be here, and if and that's going to mean that the number of zeros equals 0 mod 2, but the number of 1s is going to equal 1 mod 2. And if we go from here to 0, if we read a 0, that means this state down here will be the number of zeros equals 1 mod 2, and the number of 1s equals 0 mod 2. And this final one, it's pretty easy. See, this will be a number of zeros equals 1 mod 2, and the number of 1s equals 1 mod 2. So basically, we start reading our string, and whenever we have uh, 1 or 0, we move around. And so let's say we started with the string 0, 0, 1, 1. So we should accept that string. So when we, we start here, we read a 0, we'll go here. We'll read a 0, we'll go back here. We'll read a 1, we'll go here. We'll read a 1, we'll go back here. And we end up in the final state, and we accept it. So if we had something like um, this, we should not accept this, but let's see what happens. We read a 0, we go here. We read a 1, we go here. We read a 1, we go back here. We read a 0, we go here. And we read a 0, we go here. This is not a final state. We don't accept it. Uh, so this is a second example. And uh, what we're going to do next time is look at a different kind of finite automaton, non-deterministic finite automaton. And these are much easier to construct than deterministic finite automaton. OK, we'll stop here. And next time, we'll be looking at NFAs.